a carbon tax, and that's going to uh, cap and trade would add uh, another element of volatility separate from the energy commodity volatility to the marketplace. So if you want to be safe, you go, yes, it looks like we will see a continuing volatile market. But I'd like to suggest today other factors at play that may suggest a flattening of volatility down the road, not in particular this winter. Uh, but the the major uh, factor, I think, is the implications of gas shale production. The implications uh, have been written about that this is an enormous resource and that's certainly one of the implications is we have an awful lot of this gas shale. But the other implication is the production of shale itself. It is somewhat different than the historical uh, boom-bust cycle in natural gas production where you find a new field, you explore it, it has a curve where uh, you're trying to understand how big it is, then you're exploiting it fairly significantly, and then you have your decline, period. Natural gas shale is starting to look a lot more like a factory where you could add another shift and ramp up production or get rid of a shift and slow down production. So you go into a shale play and you will see a fairly significant um, production in the early period and then a rapid decline and then an ongoing even level production. And these curves are looking... Uh, so secure that as a producer you could move into a shale play and once you've made whatever uh, needed adjustments you have to that particular shale, you would be able to say, I could produce so much, I could produce at this level or that level or this other level. So we start to look at shale and say, maybe we start to not worry as much about the boom and bust from the production side and look at the possibility of more even production. And more even production then says, well, what's the risk of entering into longer-term contracts? It may not be as great as it is where you are not sure how much gas you're going to be getting in the future. So uh, that those two things together may suggest over time, and I'm talking over a number of years, a move to greater price stability. And the other factor, the middle bullet there, is regulatory changes. Uh, clearly, uh, there has been an outcry uh, against uh, financial market irregularities, and um, the industry on the production side, the consumption side, is saying uh, we need uh, a sufficiently liquid market uh, for those of us who are buyers and sellers of natural gas, but we do not need the sort of volatility we have seen in the past, and we expect that there is going to be increase uh, legislation and regulation uh, that will add more transparency to that marketplace and over time will probably have a dampening effect on the unwarranted volatility. If, if you, again, you go back to Chris's slides and you look at production and consumption, while they certainly are very seasonal and have significant fluctuations and while one cannot predict when your demand peak is going to be, one can very well predict that there will be a demand peak in the winter, that there'll be a certain peak in the summer for gas-fired electric generation. So these are not totally unforeseen events. So cautious optimism is towards reduced volatility. Uh, a year from now, I don't expect we'll necessarily see that in play, but I think as a long-term uh, direction, uh, hopefully we will see that. With that, we can take questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom Dollinger with Reuters. Do you have any idea because of the plentiful supply and you know, cheaper prices for gas on average what the... Do you have any um, idea what the average household may save? in natural gas costs this year because of the plentiful supply and cheaper prices. Centerpoint Energy announced last week that it was passing on lower gas prices to its consumers, and they expect their customers to save about 20 percent in winter heating costs. Yeah, and that's an absolutely fair question, and tomorrow EIA will give us a number. Um, we have not tried to anticipate that. We have not surveyed our companies. 
our companies in general have been reporting reductions to their purchase, purchase gas adjustments, their PGAs, and um, as I go around the country, I'm having companies say to their um, constituents, you know, expectations of 15% lower bills, of 20%. What, but we have not surveyed, and I cannot give you an exact number on that. We'll wait for the, the data tomorrow. And you take it tongue-in-cheek, and you wait and see what happens over the course of the winter heating season and what other factors are involved as to what those bills actually turn out to be. But clearly there's an expectation, as there was last year, as I noted, a genuine expectation of almost a 20 percent increase to bills last year, and it didn't happen. Um, this year there's a clear expectation of home heating costs being lower for natural gas consumers this year, and it's coming at a good time. I mean, economic issues, et cetera, it's, it's a good time for that to happen. But we, we haven't made a number. Sorry about that. <laughs> Siobhan Hughes with Dow Jones Newswires. I was wondering if you could talk about what the provisions in Waxman-Markey and then alternatively the shape of things in the Senate bill could mean for natural gas prices. Roger, you want to jump yeah. in on that? Yeah. Well, it's been the conventional wisdom for a year that in a uh, carbon-constrained economy, the low-carbon fuel should be the winner. And we do believe natural gas will be the winner in any reasonable uh, carbon-constrained legislation, whether that's cap and trade or uh, carbon tax or anything like that. Getting um, down to Waxman-Markey, uh, Tim Wirth famously said uh, the natural gas industry uh, was asleep at the switch or some words to that effect, speaking to the production segment of the business. I think there is some truth to that, is that the uh, production side of the natural gas industry was not terribly focused on uh, natural gas uh, in the legislation. Uh, there has been a change on that. We've seen some of that showing up um, uh, with the uh, Kerry Boxer bill, that there are provisions that would uh, recognize the advantages of natural gas and uh, be much more natural gas favorable. All that said, my own personal view is that uh, if you were to step back and say natural gas is the second largest energy source in the United States, behind oil, just slightly ahead of coal, and it's the only energy source that has a large energy source that has actually bought, brought about greenhouse gas reductions. Since 1970, we are slightly lower in greenhouse gas emissions today than we were in 1970, and we've added about a third more uh, residential customers. So it is a real success story in greenhouse gas reductions. Knowing that, one would look at legislation and say, wow, you would think you would be looking at the segment that has actually produced results uh, on greenhouse gas emissions. And either of these bills doesn't start out with that vision. And so I think we still have a ways to go uh, to say what is the proper role of natural gas. And I think we have been uh, hurt historically by the view of supply